life is full of opposites and we don't know what surprise is waiting for us at the next turn see i often give example of uh, the flower called brahma kamala it has the most uncanny leather like leaves you know you, if you see the leaves and it turns in all odd fa- you know it is like it's twisted and turned it's not not so beautiful to look it's nice <laughs> everything is beautiful in creation but if you are uh, compare it to other leaves and somewhere from the leaf itself flower blossoms you don't know where which part of the leaf it will come and is the most ethereal flower with such a you know sublime you can say celestial or just such a fragrance it has so i would say sita was like that in the most unexpected situation also she blossomed because her uh, love uh, her faith love and devotion was unshakable you know the difficult circumstances show you how the courageous face them and that is how they become a role model for us when you live in the past you become sad you simply learn from the past and live in the present moment that's what we have to learn from all these great epics and if you see the present moment is a field of all possibilities of action now once you accept the opposites then learning begins only then you start seeing things from different points of view and new realizations dawn up dawn upon us so here also i want to tell you another story do you want to hear <laughs> so this is once in chitrakoot um, a parrot befriended sita you know there is a very beautiful parakeet you can say which will talk no so she wanted to name uh, the parakeet parakeet and asked rama for suggestions so rama said uh, why don't you name it kaiki so sita was taken aback because this parrot was her friend and she was still uh, quite apprehensive of kaiki's intentions you know because she is and, and because of uh, her behest they went to the forest isn't it so she looked at rama with surprise and said uh, uh, you know rama also understood what uh, what was her predicament then he gently smiled and told her what are the parrots good at he asked sita and sita said uh, they can repeat whatever i say this especially this parrot repeats whatever i say so rama told her that is what ma kaike also did she just repeated what the gods wanted her to say and rama had acknowledged the role of a higher power in guiding the turn that life took you know so uh, he did not blame any individual and sita got it immediately and became free from any little botheration also she had about kaike and her intentions also see each of these incidents uh, can be seen through the prism of uh, you can say uh, wisdom you can see through wisdom and you will see things in a different light that is what uh, i have tried to do it in this book create the ability to see things from sita's point of view to dive into that pure and unbe- unblemished you can say consciousness and see the events as they unfold from there otherwise when you read the book um, you will understand this more so every character has a definite role to play and when you see from that angle every piece fits into the puzzle so otherwise unanswered questions can lead to aggression or depression but when you accept this you get a glimpse of the unseen unknown field of uh, all possibilities and uh, openness also comes to us what we know is so little and what we don't know is much more you know there is so much more in this universe that we need to learn isn't it and it is the mind that judges and sita was non judgmental this we have to understand and when you judge you put people into a framework and that is limited isn't it and when you see from a limited point of view then our own vision becomes clouded and we are unable to perceive reality as it is uh, here see the agni pariksha everybody has the doubt about you know another common doubt in everyone's mind is the agni pariksha so for her walking through physical fire is not a big thing for one who had mastery over the elements like sita it was the fire in the mind that had to be dealt with you know for those gathered there it was the fire of doubt in their minds how could such a delicate lady resist such a powerful asura for 6 months alone isn't it so rama wanted to remove any seed of uh, doubt among these people there 
So for Sita, it was the fire of humiliation to be uh, you know, questioned about her character in a public gathering like that, isn't it? But she was unshaken. If Rama wanted her to walk through fire, she would, because there was no doubt of, or resistance in her, uh, because she was already abiding the fire of the self. So Gurudev has spoken about five types of fire, which will help us to understand this uh, better, you know, the fire of humiliation. Uh, first one is Bhutagni, which keeps the body warm, you know, uh, which distinguishes body from this um, uh, a dead body from a corpse from a living being. Then there is Jataragni, the fire of hunger, or the fire that is... Uh, helpful in digestion, right, Jatragni. Then Kamagni is the desire. Uh, this is the fire of desire. And then Badabagni is the fire of criticism or, and humiliation, you can say. This is the toughest one to cross. And beyond this is uh, Premagni or uh, Gnanagni, the fire of love and wisdom. Sita was already established here. She was abiding in the fire of the self. So this is what uh, is, uh, that is how, you know, she had crossed over that because she was already in the Gnanagni or Premagni, isn't it? So the story here also says in uh, even Brahma and the Devas, Devas came and asked Rama, what are you doing? Why are you asking Sita to do this? You know that she is so pure. So then Rama tells them, I know, but the world sh or should also know. He wanted to show to the world how powerful uh, Sita was on her own too, isn't it? So then later Brahma gives a blessing that whoever reads the story of Sita will never be touched by the fire of humiliation. You know, this is there in Valmiki Ramayana. So such things uh, are there. Mm -hmm.